CEO Thibaut Mangan joins us now, first on CNBC. It's great to have you back on. And, you know, people might not know Kenview yet, but they certainly know your brands like Tylenol and Sudafed and Benadryl and Neutrogena. Why the more cautious guidance? Yeah, good morning, Sarah. Good to see you again. Uh, just to be clear, we, we have delivered as fair our expectations year to date. And... Uh, we have maintained the base of our guidance for, for the full year. We tightened the range to reflect a, a softer start of the cold and flu uh, season. And, uh, but when we, I reflect on the quarter, we had a healthy quarter as can view, $3.9 billion in revenue, 3.6% organic growth on top of 4.7% growth last year. Uh, we are now part of the S&P 500 index. Yeah. Uh, and you see the power of the CanView business model. You, you, you mentioned the number of our brands, the power of our portfolio of iconic brands that are in everybody's homes. And that's what we saw this, this quarter again. So happy yeah. about, uh, pleased with our results uh, to date and, and confident in our future. But, but a lot of the growth came from pricing, right? Like we've seen with other household products makers. It's still pricing driving it. Volumes were down three and a half percent. So have you reached that tipping point where where you can't pass on more price increase? Yeah, we, we see our valuarization activities continue to hold. Uh, our volumes were a bit down this quarter, but two thirds of that was really linked to some discontinuations of products we did last year and some continued softness we see in the China market. So if you accept these two distinct elements, our volumes are holding pretty well. Uh, in, in a higher inflationary environment. What about skin and beauty, which was, I think, a, a little bit disappointing and obviously a big, important category. What are you seeing there? Yeah, we, we, we see uh, the, the, the skin health and beauty segment impacted by the two distinct elements I just talked about, the discontinuations we did last year and the softness of the market in, uh, in China. Uh, but we, these two elements mask some good underlying strengths of our, of our brands, our skin, health, and beauty business is doing very well in Europe, in Latin America, and in the U.S. Uh, we continue to innovate. We had a very strong sun season, and now winter is coming. We are uh, launching moisturizers. We are just launching a new Neutrogena Hydro Boost gel cream that gives you nine times more hydration, which is so important in winter time. So we're excited about uh, the, the innovation we are bringing to market. It has been extremely well received by customers and we can't wait to see it in, uh, in consumers' homes uh, this winter. Nine times more hydration, David. All right. Uh, Thibault, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine that you, when you drew up the plans to split this off or when J&J &J did, um, that you expect the stock to be down or lose almost a third of its value in the time since it's become a public company. What do you tell uh, those holders uh, at this point in terms of, you know, why this has not performed as well as I believe many believed it would when it was split off? Yeah, we are transitioning to a new shareholder base. Uh, what we are focused on at Kenview is fo being focused on the fundamentals of the business, building a strong foundation for, for, for the future performance of the company. And we feel very good about the strength of our business model, the power of, uh, of our portfolio that allows us to deliver sustained, profitable growth. We saw it again uh, this, uh, this quarter with healthy top line, healthy margins, strong cash flow generation, another dividend of 20 cents payable in November on top of the dividend we, we paid last quarter. So that's the CanView uh, business model and we are confident in our future.